Welcome back to the American College of Surgeons Bulletin Brief from the front lines, Surgeon Voices. With me today are two individuals who represent the American Society of Colonorectal Surgeons for this interview, Dr. Connor Delaney, the president-elect of the American Society of Colonorectal Surgeons, and also the chief executive officer and president of the Cleveland Clinic Florida region, and Dr. Samantha Hendren. Dr. Hendren is an associate professor at the University of Michigan and also the chair of the Rectal Cancer Committee for the ASCRS. Welcome. Thank you, Steve. So perhaps we'll, we'll start out a little bit because this interview today is about the National Accreditation Program for Rectal Cancer, a program housed within the American College of Surgeons and then in turn within the Commission on Cancer. And, and maybe we'll, we'll actually start with Dr. Hendren and ask a little bit about explaining the NAPRC for those individuals who don't practice in the realm of rectal cancer surgery. And there's been a recognition for some time that the quality of the multidisciplinary care and the quality of surgery for rectal cancer varied quite a bit across the United States. And because of that recognition, um, a, a group was formed, uh, the Ostrich um, Consortium, and it was a group of surgeons uh, from across multiple surgical societies who had a mission to try to improve the care of rectal cancer in the U.S. Ultimately, that group, the Ostrich Group, partnered with the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer and, and created the National Accreditation Program for Rectal Cancer. That program is an accreditation program similar to the breast cancer accreditation program that um, the Commission on Cancer has had available for some time. The real focus of the NAPRC program is on promoting high quality multidisciplinary care. And so most of the measures that um, uh, sites seeking accreditation um, seek to follow have to do with the structures of care, ensuring that patients um, receive multidisciplinary care, appropriate um, neoadjuvant therapy, that um, there are consistent presentations at a multidisciplinary uh, team meeting for all rectal cancer patients, and that the staging and uh, timeliness of care are all correct. So uh, one of the wonderful things about the National Accreditation Program for Rectal Cancer is that it's actually a collaboration amongst seven different societies. We have uh, the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer um, as, the, as the home for it, but there are four additional surgical societies, uh, the Society for Gastrointestinal and Endoscopic Surgeons, SAGES, the SSAT, the Society for the Surgery of the Alimentary Tract, the Society for Surgical Oncology, SSO, and then finally our society, the ASCRS. We also have two non-surgical societies, the Society of Abdominal Radiology and the College of American Pathologists. Now, um, these societies are involved and, and important in the steering of NAPRC because the collaboration between um, surgeons and other disciplines are so, are so important in the treatment of rectal cancer. Thank you very much for, for that background. And um, I know that our viewers and listeners can check the website, the NAPRC website within the ACS COC to, to get some additional details. But some of the standards, uh, and you mentioned how quality is uh, very important in rectal cancer surgery and how it's been shown that uh, collaboration enhances quality. So, so to verify education, the American College of radiology and the uh, Society of Abdominal Radiologists have uh, worked together, created an educational module, College of American Pathologists is an educational module. Um, but the third requirement for members of the MDT of the NAPRC in an accredited center is the surgical module. So Dr. Delaney, you um, were very instrumental initially in, in SAGES that, that uh, Dr. Hendren mentioned, Society of American Gastrointestinal and Endoscopic Surgeons, creating educational modules uh, that were validated and, and psychometrically uh, assessed. Um, and you began the Fundamentals for Rectal Cancer Surgery module for the ASCRS. Could you tell us a little bit about that journey, or perhaps starting even with, with SAGES, your background, and then what happened at ASCRS? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Steve, I think it was an opportunity and it wasn't just me, it was a, a team of us within the American side of colorectal surgery um, who perhaps learned a little bit from what SAGES, as you mentioned, Society of American GI and Endoscopic Surgeons had done, um, but thought that 
if we're going to have a way of managing rectal cancer, that is all of the things that Dr. Andrew mentioned, multidisciplinary with appropriate quality and standards, we need to be playing off the same play sheet. And we'd obviously seen this playing out internationally. And over the last couple of decades, we'd seen improvement in rectal cancer outcomes. Um, but there wasn't really necessarily a same play sheet. And when I talked to people in Europe, they, they wondered what, what, was, what was going on in the US. And so my explanation, well, the, the US is more a continent than any one country in Europe. We have states that are very geographically diverse with relatively small populations and some high population centers where there's very high volume centers. And SAGES, as you well know, um, had done fantastic work over the previous decade and a half around two really important programs. The first was the Fundamentals of Laparoscopic Surgery, or FLS, um, to teach basic laparoscopic skills. And the second that evolved out of that was the Fundamentals of Endoscopic Surgery, or FES, to teach the techniques of endoscopic surgery. So we thought ahead with this and thought, well, what about if we could try and standardize some of the techniques and done around rectal cancer surgery and hence FRCS, Fundamentals of Rectal Cancer Surgery. So that was the journey we started on and we partnered again with many of the same societies uh, that were looking at the multidisciplinary pathways as Sam mentioned uh, that evolved into NAPRC. And so SAGES again and SSO and the college and pathologists and radiologists because immediately at the beginning we realized it's not just a technical exercise, right? It's, it's everything else. You have to know how to evaluate these patients properly. That's multidisciplinary uh, imaging and examination. You have to know how to examine them afterwards with the pathology as well as the technical side. And also then there have to be standards around and uh, there are uh, evidence-based uh, ways to use uh, preoperative treatment, etc. So the course uh, rapidly evolved into a pre, intra and post-op educational module um, much like CAP have done with the standardized uh, College of American Pathology uh, module for examining rectal cancer and radiology for MRI, uh, largely out of Gina Brown's work in the UK. Um, so we developed the same curriculum around rectal cancer surgery so that all surgeons could play off the same play sheet. And again, we know that people come to doing rectal cancer surgery through different routes. Uh, we've got American Society Colorectal Surgery members who've done a colorectal fellowship. Uh, there are those who do a surgical oncology fellowship, but we also know that there are general surgeons who do not do training after their residency, who do res rectal cancer surgery because of geography, uh, maybe not the same volumes that other institutions do. And again, this gave everybody the opportunity to have something similar as a playbook to be playing on. That's great. I appreciate that information. And you've mentioned a couple of important things about a, a curriculum. Uh, and about standardization, and, and very importantly, emphasize that any type of surgeon can participate uh, regardless of, uh, of training, as long as uh, they've done surgical training, of course. Uh, so for somebody to actually take the educational module, to go through the experience of the curriculum, what, what's it about? Maybe I'll ask Sam to describe uh, the, the program itself. Yes, of course. So this is an online educational module that's available through the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons um, Online Learning Center. Um, it is a, it is, there is a fee associated with um, purchasing the course and um, all of that information is available on the ASCRS website. Um, like other online educational modules, um, there is um, written content and there also is a very robust collection of images, figures, and videos. We actually have 25 videos demonstrating different aspects of rectal cancer surgery included in the course. The course takes, um, we, the course is um, associated with uh, 10 hours of CME credit. And when we pilot tested the course, um, you know, the time it takes to go through the course varied a bit from user to user, but we felt that 10 hours of CME credit was appropriate for it. And um, as Dr. Delaney mentioned, there are uh, basically five pieces to the course. We have a short background section that talks about anatomy and physiology, as well as some of the background that led the modern sort of rectal cancer treatment community to administer um, multidisciplinary care in the way that we do. Then there's the preoperative 
intraoperative and postoperative sections. And these didactic sections have the embedded videos. Finally, there's a self-assessment examination at the end that just helps the learner to reinforce what they've learned in the course. Um, we have had um, the course launched since April, and um, the user feedback that we've gotten has been very positive. We know that both um, members of, of the ASCRS as well as non-members have been taking the course and have found it to be um, to be valuable. And one of the questions we ask in the course evaluation is, would you recommend this course to a colleague? And the overwhelming majority uh, say that they would. Connor, can you tell us, is, is this educational module and self-assessment uh, piece of it that follows something that's valuable for international surgeons as well and, and or for surgical trainees? So Steve, I think that's an important point to bring up. So first, I, th I think Dr. Hendron nicely said that the, the early data are very promising, people like this, and the feedback has been very good. And that's exciting because that's what this was designed for. It was designed as a course that could be used by general and colorectal and surgical oncologists. It was designed as a course that we could be used independent of geography, thinking international as well as just US, and obviously developed by a US team, that, but that could be used more broadly. And also designed as a course that was pitched and a lot of effort went in, just like with FES and FLS, to designing the level of the education um, and the level of the questions, to pitching at a level that was um, around the level of colorectal fellowship training. So people, if they were general surgeons, should have finished a full general surgeon training. So they'd be able to appreciate and develop and evolve from there. Um, and, and it fitted nicely then into more senior surgical experience. So it was designed with that in mind, both being educationally appropriately diverse, um, but then also being something that could be used uh, internationally and around the world. Sam, question about the, the content. Uh, rectal cancer, like many aspects of surgery, is in a fluid state, constantly evolving. What are the plans for updating the educational content and perhaps the self-assessment material? And that's such an important point because uh, a course like this cannot remain the same over time as the evidence changes. Our plan right now is to, to update the course on a three-year cycle so that there will be a new version of the course with updated evidence, potentially you know, uh, better um, videos and, and content that reflects changes in technique as well as evidence every three years. So basically a three-year renewal cycle with a new version coming out periodically. We actually are, are committed, the Rectal Cancer Committee in ASCRS has um, a subcommittee specifically reviewing um, literature and guidelines um, on a quarterly basis so that we can uh, remain uh, completely up to date um, as, as the, the playing field changes. Great. Um, yeah. And, and um, not to create more work for you, Connor, or ASCRS, it, it sounds like such a robust educational tool and, and so greatly appreciated by the surgical community your president-elect of, of ASCRS, do you have plans to reproduce this type of module for inflammatory bowel disease or, or, or other disorders uh, that are covered by the ASCRS? And not currently, Steve, but it's certainly a model that's worked very well. So it's something that we can consider. You know, we're literally just at the stage of having put a number of years of work into rolling this out. So sit back, watch it, uh, see what happens, uh, learn from the data that we get, and then decide how we use that best for other for other topics in the future. Well, it's certainly an impressive amount of work and the result is very gratifying. Uh, I thank both of you for everything you've done for NAPRC, as well as the entire team, which has evolved over the years uh, since Connor initiated until April when it was launched uh, under the ASCRS and your guidance, Sam. So thank you, thank your teams, and, and thank you both for your time and insights today. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure, Steve. And you highlight something very important. We're here uh, as two people of a very, very large number that participated and helped with this over, over a number of years. So thank you for mentioning that.